Hello, Auggies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kastler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today we have an interesting question that comes from William Mega, and he is W1FHU. And his question has to do with the way power cords for radios, um, we're talking HF radios or a uh, VHF, UHF mobile station. They come with fairly long power cords. In fact, uh, they're not even always stuck together. There's one great big uh, black one and one great big red one. He says, factory power cords, um, what about the location of the fuses? The IC718 glass fuses are near the transceiver. That's because that's a radio that is, I believe, just used in base stations. The IC7200 uses the ATO slash ACT type fuses are near the battery. Is there any advantage to where the fuses are located? Is there any difference in the voltage drop between the glass fuses and ATO ACT type fuses? Is there any appreciable voltage drop for power pole connectors? I am reworking my IC718 cord and planning to copy the IC7200 cord and adding power poles to a WMR Power Guard Plus. I need about a 10 foot run, so I know I will already have voltage drop in the cable. Yes. Using an Alenco DM330MV. Um, MV means, the M means it has meters, and the V means it's variable voltage, so be careful of that. You can. There's an indent usually at 13.8 volts, but you can accidentally push that voltage high or low for that matter. Okay, there's a million different questions in there. First, let's take a look at the two types of fuses. This is the classic glass fuse that you find um, in some of the radios. This is kind of being replaced by these newer automotive fuses. And this is a type of an automotive fuse. You buy them in packages of like five. They are color coded. This one right here is a um, 30 amp fuse. And you can tell at a glance whether it is broken by looking Okay, I can't get that to there. By looking through the plastic on the side and seeing if that link is broken, okay? That link is broken, the fuse is bad. Uh, many little fuse kits, like mine, come with a fuse puller. And what you do is you put this over the end of the fuse like this. And notice how that comes down to where it goes into the socket. You put it down there and you pull it out. It's very easy to pull out that way. You can also use some uh, long nose pliers to come in, grab that thing, and pull it out. All right. To uh, you have to check it visually. Now it is possible for a fuse to blow and it not be very visible. So they have included in here a little tester and see the little green light comes on if the fuse is working all right so that tells you about types of fuses for ham radio work they are essentially um, interchangeable now there's the old adage They call that a fuse, whatever. It's got a little wire in there that will burn if the rating is exceeded. Now, a lot of radios have 25 amp for the 100 watt radios. Uh, the newer radios may have even 30 amp because they take up more power on receive because they are, after all, basically just computers. Okay. Now, I want to show you a little bit about the fusing of mobile radios. 
radios that can be used in a mobile environment. You generally have the radio, and you have your DC power connector, okay? And then this goes out for a long ways, like 10 feet or something like that. And then you have two wires that are, that are just open on the ends, and you have a fuse, you have a fuse up here, okay, and you've got the other wire, the black wire, it's also got a fuse, and you connect these directly to the terminals on the battery. Okay, you do that so that you don't get the wiring of the car involved. It also results in less RFI from the car and so on. Now, I can understand this, but why this one? Why have a fuse right there? The reason is this. Your car, put some wheels on it here, okay, your car, the chassis is the return lead for everything. And that return lead comes down in a single spot with a single cable, usually attached to the block of the engine, okay, and attached to here. If for any reason, and this is a very unusual failure, this cable comes loose either here or here, everything in the car is going to try to reach ground through this lead right here, and that will pop that fuse. If you don't, you've got way too much ener energy, way too much amperage going through this uh, wire right here, and it can burn. So that's why there are fuses in both leads. Now, if you are in uh, your home, and I have found this to be an issue, for example, with these long wires, there is a voltage drop. I mean, these are usually number 12 wires. There is a voltage drop. You can shorten them. For example, if you've got a little um, power strip that's got fuses in it, um, we're not going to trust the fuses in there. We're going to add a fuse holder here, okay, and do away with this over here and put an Anderson power pole connector on this, okay, and the black one is the negative, and the red one is the positive, okay, and these will plug into here, okay. Now, make sure that when you do this, that you can do this. And I want you to get a picture of me doing this. You're going to want to be able to do this with your radio. Why? So you can get at the back of this and get at the cables and so on without having to go around back behind. You might want to change a coax connector or something like that or plug a key into the back. So make sure that your power cord is long enough to do that. And then when you push it back into shape, nothing uh, shorts when you do that. All right? So this tells us a lot about... Now, if you're using a power strip, there is a fuse in the power strip. Now, the question, it's got to be big enough to, to support the radio. The question becomes, since there's a fuse there, do I need a fuse in the uh, supply line itself? And I would answer that and say, it's a good idea. You should do that because someday you're going to take your radio out to a field day site. And you're going to plug it in something that's directly connected to a battery. You want a fuse between you and the battery. Okay. So you put two fuses in order. There's very little voltage drop with the fuses. There's very little voltage drop with the Anderson power pole connectors. Um, I would recommend you use the original wire that came with the radio. Now, here's something that's interesting. Some radio manufacturers, for a while, 
used Anderson power pole connectors on the back of the radios. The problem with that is that they'll pull out. Okay, they're not attached. The uh, normal connector that comes with the radio has got little locking things on it, locking tabs, so it'll stay attached. You have to remember to squeeze those if you want to get it out. So, there you have it. Let's see. Is there any advantage to where the fuses are located? In the mobile situation, right next to the battery. I have seen some radios have an additional fuse in the red side, the positive side, um, near the radio. That's fine. For some reason, and I don't know why, I have seen almost no radios with built-in fuses. They all should have them, but none of them do. I think the uh, my Tentec has a uh, fuse in the back, which you can change. Um, I don't know why this is. You know, they, they, they keep changing things. It used to be radios came with power supplies um, that you could plug in and you'd have your power uh, or connect directly to a battery like the F. T101B up here will take either 12 volts or 110. Okay, you use a different plug for each one of this, but the power supply is self contained. However, it came without a microphone and without a speaker. Okay, nowadays radios come with microphones and speakers. Okay, so, but they don't come with a power supply. So you have to buy a power supply uh, with each of those. Is there any difference in voltage drop between glass fuses and the automotive type? Um, negligible, negligible difference. Is there any appreciable voltage drop from power pole connectors? No, negligible. I am reworking my IC718 cord and planning to copy the IC7200 cord and adding power poles to this uh, WMR PowerGuard Plus is something he's got in his system. I need about a 10-foot run. Um, you'll note in my setup over here that I have the power supply right next to the radio. The power supply goes to, on the back there, if you want to go around back, you can get a picture of that. On the back here is a 12-volt um, distribution panel, okay? And from here, we connect to the 7300. Now, the 7300, they think, could be used as a mobile radio, so they give me the mobile-style connectors. And I'll admit, I just connected a power pole to the end of that, and the radio works fine. So you can do well with that. All right. Um, and using the Elenco DM330 MV power supply, again, it's got a meter. And so you want to set that voltage to 13.8, um, and you'll do fine. And there you have it. I think we've answered all your questions. Now, after the 73, we're going to add a uh, couple minutes of... Uh, charts that show how to get in touch with me, how to get the, um, how to enter the monthly drawing, so on and so forth, and also lists all our patrons and PayPal uh, supporters uh, on there too. If you would like to support this channel, one of the best ways to do it is through patreon.com. There are four different levels you can choose there to support uh, the channel. Uh, you can also uh, add something. If you put in a comment, you can throw in a couple bucks with the comment. Um, and soon we'll have membership set up. So, until we next meet, and be prepared to notice if any of your friends or you are on the patron list. Until next time, 73.